Hi everybody, this is Toby. Um, we are back with our training video series Rock Vapor Classic part number seven. Today we are creating layers with uh, the application Snappy Hex Mesh. I'm not going into into the really crazy details of, uh, of layer generation because yes, I'm not an expert as I would be um, and therefore I will just show you how you can create layers with Snappy Hex Mesh and I will also refer to the Angus um, PDF file I already mentioned, this comprehensive uh, tour through Snappy Hex Mesh. So just to recall what we did the last time we created um, we created our mesh using snappy hex mesh and we snapped our mesh which looks like this now we will have here still some yeah non very nice looking mesh but i don't care at at this right now at the moment um by the way i i during due to the fact that i'm using um, fluent in in my in my daily work at the company I'm working for, I also convert fluent meshes to open foam. And an interesting point I figured out is that in fluent, if I am checking or I'm, I'm visualizing some mesh, I would not find any artificials like this in the mesh. The mesh looks always smooth. Um, even here, if you have like, you know, this, some, some looks like some holes you have in the surface or something like this. Interesting fact is if I'm converting the fluent mesh into an open foam format and read it with Paraview, I also see something like this. Um, just for you as information. Okay, so what we did the last time we made the, the, the mesh, we snapped it, it looks like here. We have here at the walls, we have here a bit more refinement and here at the inlet, outlet, however you will name this, um, um, also more refinement. Okay, this mesh looks crazy because I have um, the triangulation on and I also decompose the polyhedrals. This we already know. Um, if I make the crinkle slice, um, we get even a better mesh here, so very nice. So now we want to add layers here on the walls. Um, probably we will get here um, some problems or we get here some problems. I don't know, we will see. So in order to create layers, you have to you have to activate the layer algorithm um, as it is given here, right? And when you start from an already snapped mesh, you have to set the other two algorithms to false. If you start from a background mesh and you have to make the castellated part and the snapping part in addition, um, of course, you have to activate both or all three then. Okay, in order that we, in order, um, yeah, due to the fact that we are adding layers, we are directly going down to the add layer controls dictionary here. And what do we have to say? We can go down, you see a lot of parameters here, you can, you can read through that. And there are um, a lot of parameters um, mentioned in this comprehensive tour from Angus, which is a very nice PDF. And it is explained how things are working. And that's why I'm not um, talking about uh, all these parameters. I will just show you what you have to do in order to generate layers. So one of the important things is um, when you add layers, you have to, to think about, do I want to have the layers everywhere in the same thickness? If yes, then you have to work with a relative sizes false. Otherwise, you ha you work with relative sizes true. What is the difference? So if you have a surface and you have different castellated, you, you, you have, um, let's say, you have different, this is the surface and this is the first cell thickness and you have different s levels of cells here. So which means you have your bigger cell and the next surface phase, you get smaller cells, right? 
So the height of the first cell on the surface is different. If you have relative sizes true, the layer thickness is calculated based on this height. That means that if you have different first cells on the surface with different um, height, your layer will change according to the height of the first cell on your mesh you have at the, at the, at the moment. Okay, this, um, and, and actually it's also written here in, in the, the comment. One of the most important sub dictionaries is the layer part. Here you, you write your patch name. So that means on the patch walls, we want to add two layers. And then we have here, if you're going down of the sub layer, a global keyboard expansion ratio, which means if you have two layers, do the two layers be the same height or do they vary of height based on this expansion ratio? And the final layer thickness, 0 0.3. So if we are working with relative sizes is false, then this would mean that we have 0 0.3 meters final layer thickness, which does not make sense, which is like something like this, yeah, something like this, which doesn't make sense if we have a smoking pipe of this size, right? Um, therefore, we would do it like this. So then we would have 300 micrometers of final layer thickness. And yeah, this is uh, the final layer thickness. If you have the relative sizes true, the final layer thickness depends on the first cell on which is like connected to the, to the patch on the third surface. So this is like the difference as I already explained. And then the minimum thickness, 0 0.1. Again, if we would have here false, this is also a value of absolute values. So which means if the, the, the layer thickness is below this value, just collapse it. So in, in that case, if we would have here, let's do it again, 300 micron meters of um, layer thickness final, then it cannot be that the minimum thickness is at, at least 0 0.1 meter. That would mean we, we um, um, sorry, 10 centimeters. So the, the minimum thickness would be uh, um, 10 centimeters. So in that case, we would need very tiny layers, but Snappy Hex Mesh does not allow to create these because we are below this minimum thickness. In order to create, layers we would be at least 0 0.3 I'm not sure if this would work but if you are 0 0.001 so 100 microns um, would be would be um, working I, I would expect it like this so um, we are going back to true in that case again this minimum thickness is based on the on the, on the height of the first cell on the surface all right, and then we have all a lot of other parameters I want to talk about right now. One important thing is that within, so the layer generation here, I want to tell in another way around, is we have two, we have two layers. We want to add two layers. The maximum layer or the final layer thickness 0 0.3, and we have an expansion ratio. Based on this parameters, so uh, actually uh, three parameters, uh, Snappy Hex Mesh can calculate how height, the height of the two layers. However, there could be different things. Uh, you want to say, okay, I want to have the first height of the layer to be, I don't know, one millimeter, two millimeters or whatever. You can do it in a different way. Um, and I want to show this to you. And therefore, we split it here. So on, on top, we have still our dictionary. And here we open foam source. Is it not working? I'm not sure. Foam. Open foam. Open foam. Let's go to eight. Then we have etc. Then we have. Is it case dicts 
I guess so. Generation, general snappy hex mesh stick. So I just opened another. This is not the, the one I wanted to open. I'm just one moment. Ah, I know. I know. There's something. Utilities, application, utilities, mesh, generation, snappy hex mesh, snappy hex mesh. It's not there anymore. I will just make bow. So I, I found it. I was almost. I was almost correct. It is in the in the previous one. It is in. Um, okay. Case dicts annotated and then we have here somewhere snappy hex mesh and now i just opened snappy hex mesh the dictionary well oh, the sun is coming out nice and within this file there there are a lot of more commands we are going down 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 and and here we have these add layers and then we have layer thickness specification. So we can use expansion ratio final, final layer thickness. Expansion ratio or first layer thickness. Overall thickness and first layer thickness. Overall thickness and final layer thickness. Overall thickness and expansion ratio. And what you can do is, um, as you can see here, um, in our example, we could add here um, first layer thickness. And as we are also relative, then we could do it like this. So we have first layer thickness and expansion ratio. We can also use overall thickness and first layer thickness or overall thickness and final layer thickness, by the way. I was, I'm, I'm sorry, the final layer thickness is the, the, the layer, the layer height of the final um, and not um, or the, the complete one. So as you can see, overall thickness is the thickness of all layers. So um, you can also use um, overall thickness, I guess, or is it there an example below? Thickness, it's just called thickness. So, yeah, so the, the, the thickness would be 0 0.8 um, related to the relative size. So this is a, a thing that you should keep in mind. And also you can put these keywords into the sub dictionary walls. Um, for example, first layer thickness 0 0.3 and expansion ratio of 1.1. If you would have another surface which you want to ref um, create layers which has different um, attributes or you want to have a different control over that, you want to ref make the layers more, more, yeah, tiny. Um, let's say we would have a patch that's called Walls 2. You can just copy that and you can use an expansion layer of, of 3 while the first layer thickness is 0 0.3. And you can also say, I want to have here five layers. Or you, you, you just say uh, thickness is 0 0.4 and um, based on what we have here, um, yeah, I don't know, expansion ratio or, or whatever. So you can make a different combination for each patch. This I just wanted to, to, to let you know. Okay, so the final layer thickness is 0 0.06. So the first thing I was saying that we should have 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 in between that would, would allow us that the, the, the transition between the internal mesh afterwards and the first layer. So not the first layer on the surface, the first layer between the internal mesh and the layer generated mesh. Um, would have a smooth transition. So I'm just, um, I'm normally working with 0 0.8, 0 0.7 and the minimum thickness we keep at 0 0.1. Okay, I just um, close this one. So, and 
we are just starting snappy hex mesh so what we get out is um, at the beginning we see here layer thickness um, is specified as final layer and expansion ratio so if you have another method as explained already it would um, be written here so and then we have um, some output and what we get is here you see layers average thickness near the wall would be uh, yes 142 microns and the overall layer thickness would be 313 microns is it correct near the wall overall overall is then the, the final complete thickness and then uh, snappy hex mesh is calculating a, a lot of things and based on the quality criteria as compared to the snapping part snappy hex mesh is checking if the created layers are correct and if not um, they will be collapsed and at the end um, we will see okay we have 1500 illegal faces um, snappy hex mesh is extruding some uh, layers and you get here the coverage on the surface and then snappy hex mesh is doing again the layer generation layer generation and layer generation you see the percentage is going down and down and down so snappy hex mesh can at least build 86.8 percent of the total surface area which belongs to the wall patch is now layered 15 percent are not layered and this is based on our mesh and on our quality criterias so let's just check what we get i want to cut through i directly slice it and i also say i don't want to have the decomposition um let's check out what we get here we have zero time and so zero time so this is with layers this is without layers with layers and without layers so it's directly you can see it here so on surfaces which are aligned with the coordinate axis things are probably working fine some people think that this year that snappy hex mesh is collapsing the layers on the corners is terrible um, numerically it's not terrible because you have to think about non-orthogonality if the layers would be extended towards this corner and it would have here the face which is connected to this cell and this cell then you can imagine that the cell center to cell center um, line will not go through the face and this makes numerical um, some problems which could be handled but it's not um, not a not very good at all so and even though you can have you, you know here is a stagnation point so why I want to have a late generation here so here it's collapsing too which actually could be avoided but i don't care about that what i would, would would be like would nice to have the layers here um you can see here it is collapsing here we get here a nice layering um until we get to to this part so out of the box i'm i'm happy with this and um, don't play around to get 100 percent coverage it's not possible on complex geometries with snappy hex mesh um, so i get 95 98 when i'm playing around with snappy hex mesh but um, for me this is fine i, I would also pr even prefer uh, not having layers for these tutorials but i just wanted to show you how you can create layers so and and what i want to let you know how this 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 stuff is working so snappy hex mesh the work um snappy hex meshes or the algorithm is working is we have 
this snapped mesh. So this side here is the internal mesh. So this is this one. I will just do it like this. So this here on top is the internal mesh and here we have this gap. So what snappy hex mesh is doing actually, it adds here these two layers outside and then pushes the layers into the mesh, which you can see here. Here we have, just imagine we have here two layers, right? And these are getting pushed inside. What will happen? The whole internal mesh here, all these cells will move up and they are moving up. And you can see here that they are getting bended based on this layer extended extension. So compared, previously this was aligned. This is related to the simple castellated part. Then based on this cell, which is aligned still, the other cells will move up. So, and they move up according to the added layers. So what you can see here, actually, this is not um, a very good um, layer because it, it still keeps almost the same level size or the, the height the first. So what you can do to get a, a better, to get a better layer mesh. So what I want to do is I want to make the expansion ratio larger that we have a difference between the first and second layer, which is more intensive. Intensive, nice word. Um, I reduce the final layer thickness to 0 0.6. And in order to be on the safe side, I make also this one. And I remove the layered mesh. We remesh. It's almost 22 minutes. So this is the last part I want to show you. So now it can happen that we get a better coverage of the surface because we have smaller cells or smaller layers, um, which you, you have to imagine. So if you push this layer, this pack of layer into the internal mesh, you get um, a distortion inside the mesh. And if this is um, failing the quality criteria, the layers are getting collapsed. So um, this is like the, the algorithm how Snappy works. And I, I believe there are better algorithms um, so now we didn't get a better um, coverage, maybe due to the fact that we add three layers now. So this is always a tricky thing. So now you see one, two, three layers. They are still, um, yeah, very thick. Um, and now you can play around to get um, a better mesh. Uh, what I want to, to show you, um, let's create a, a more crazy mesh. So what we do is we make the final layer thickness two. that you see what happens here. Um, Work CD training. I just open Paraview that we are a bit faster. We cut through the guy. No. So here is the mesh. We cut through it. We check the surface, we crinkle it. So still the mesh without the layers. We don't skip the zero time. We check it's still working. So a bit slow. Let's see how this will work out. So you can see now with this changing of these parameters, um, the late generation took a lot longer and it is trying to, to 
yeah, you see, there are some small stupid problems with a few cells and Snappy Hex Mesh will now make um, 50 iterations um, in order to get rid of these problems but I don't get it gets rid that the program gets rid of these problems so it's still too but we have to wait I just make pause so now we are finished we had how many iterations 42 and then um, it was finished so we have even less coverage uh, we will check how it looks like now we have here layers I actually don't like too much so these layers they have in my personal opinion a too much um, ratio between the cell the internal cell and the first layer here so this tra this transition is still okay um, for me but you know sometimes people are starting to have this big cell and then they start to have within this length scale I don't know 20 20 cells with prism layers you can do that very very good and snappy hex mesh it's a, a bit tricky and you can see this adding layers here the small ones will not work here at all so how can you improve your the, yeah how can you achieve more coverage of um, the mesh so there are a few tricks of course you can deactivate the quality criterias you can or in a similar way scaling up your mesh by a factor of thousand and then we scale it back by a factor of, of, of 10 of uh, 10 minus 3 um, The other thing is you can as you know now how snappy hex mesh adds these layers so it is like adding, creating the layers on top of the surface and pushes it into the internal mesh you can imagine that here there are very small cells and if you push now from the top and from the bottom six new cells inside this gets squeezed out here and probably um, this makes trouble in creating layers here all right um, if you have a lot of cells between two sides where layers are snappy hex mesh works um, quite nice but if you have two less cells here in between um, it is um, a tricky part to add the layers here with the algorithm uh, snappy hex mesh works okay so we have a 30 minutes almost. Thanks for watching guys. This was the first video after a while. We are going on in this uh, training video screencast. I will finish this um, the next time we are making the first simulation, making some uh, small setup with this case. And then I show you how things work in open foam. We get some nice visualization and yeah, I would um, think that we are also making uh, more more advanced boundary conditions. So we will see how, how this, this works. Okay, guys, take care and bye-bye.